Hello, can I help you? Si, senorita. I, I, I like for see Senor Goodwins, maybe, please. What is your name, please? Badillo, Angelo Badillo. Perhaps you could tell me what it's about. Uh, it's, it's about, uh, uh, it's, a, it's about something, what happened in Tia Cali. Oh, just a moment. There's a Senor Badillo here to see you. He's from Tia Cali. Go right in. Me, classic. Come in, Mr. Badillo. Gracias. You are Senor Goodwins? That's right. I have something for you from Senor Ravel. How is Ravel? Maybe this thing she can tell you. Did Ravel give this to you personally? No, he gave it to me himself. <laughs> well, is there anything you can tell us? Uh, something about the circumstances in which you got this? Maybe this thing she can tell you better. Ah, I see. Well, do you mind waiting outside a few minutes, Mr. Padillo? You mean I, I'm under arrest? Oh, no, no. But I might want to talk to you after I listen to this. Oh, si, senor, si. Keep your eye on him. If he leaves, call downstairs and have him followed. Who's Ravel? Well, that's the alias Matt Reed he's using on the border. It's a tough case. Maybe you can lend him a hand. It must be a tough one if Reedy needs a hand. What is it this time? Gold, Harry. Gold. They're smuggling into this country for transshipment to the Orient. You see, they have no direct transportation down there. In the Orient, they're peddling this on the black market for $75 and $80 a troy ounce. Against $35 in this country. Let's listen to this thing. Who tipped you off to the gold smuggling? Well, the Mexican federales. They found the body of Tony Randolph under a culvert a couple of months ago. You remember Randolph, gold operator? Yeah. So we sent Reedy down there. We built him up an alias as one Nick Ravel, operated with Eastern mobs. We fixed it so that if anyone checks on him, they'd contact customs agents. When did Matt leave? About five weeks ago. You know, this is an excellent idea, reporting on these recordings. It's the first time we've heard from him since he's been down there. Hope this gives us a good lead. Hello, Jim. I'm in a tight spot, and I don't know how much I'll be able to get to you. Following our plan of attack, I had Tia Cali as Nick Ravel. I checked my things at a hotel and began sizing up the town, its people and night spots. I decided the Bronze Tiger was the kind of place that catered to the clientele I wanted to meet. Si, senor. Música, maestro, por favor. Far below the Mexican border, in a little town called Poca Poca Tin, there's a bold and dashing vaquero who has all the ladies in a spin. Miguelito, Miguelito, on his little donkey he goes riding by. Miguelito, Miguelito, all the señoritas look at him and sigh. He is handsome, oh so handsome. He could break a heart with just a rubbish smile. But he'll never, ever, ever Cause his wife is right behind him all the while. Ay, 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 poor Miguelito. Miguelito, Miguelito, en su burrito pasando por aquí. Miguelito, Miguelito, todas las muchachas le dicen así. Ay, qué guapo, qué buen mozo. Miguelito, te quiero con frenesí. Si Miguelito no contesta, porque su señora viene por ahí. Ay, 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 por Miguelito.
Si, senor. Much better now. What do you mean now? Last year, I lose all the time. Every day. Tuesday, Monday, Friday, Saturday. So this year, I play only Saturday. <laughs> so I don't lose so much. <laughs> 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 Hey, you see? You better have a system. Sure, I know. I've got a friend who's got a system on all these gadgets. He's Americano. Yeah, Tony Randolph. You know Tony? Sure. Seen him around lately? You went with him. Well, just to say hello. Cut up a few touches, maybe. All right, Ansel. You gonna play all night? Get Wait, Mr. Berger, this is my machine. Don't I'm going to play me in this much. Get out. Hey, you play kind of rough, don't you? Yeah. Maybe this one's luckier. Got hurt. Thanks. Riding in on your charger. Buy your drink. I buy the drinks here. Pancho, bottle of champagne, two glasses at the table. Si, senorita. You must be Miss Brown's tiger. They call me Solitaire. What's your name? Nick Ravel. Understand you're interested in Tony Randolph. My, what pretty little ears you had. What about Tony? We got a little deal going. What kind of a deal? You'll have to ask Tony. That'll be tough. He's dead. It's too bad. Kind of leaves me holding the bag. What's in the bag? Rocks. Tony didn't fool with rocks. I know. He was going to get them across for me. Where are they? Penny Andy stuff, two grand at the most. Ten across the border. You can't get them across. Better drop them before they burn you. Better always are inquisitive about newcomers. Who do I see about dropping them? Try Big Bill Dixon. He's got a loan company down the block. He likes to help people. If the office isn't open, try the side door. But don't tell him the rocks are hot. Thanks for the tip. I wouldn't be fooling with Penny Annie stuff either. The syndicate in Detroit hadn't told it. Who'd you know in the syndicate? Cardone. Helms. What'd you do? Front man. Wish I could help you, but I'm just a gal who runs a cabaret. Sure, I know. And thanks for the champagne. Maybe you'll let me help you drink it again sometime. Sit down, I'll be right with you. Mr. Warren here, we're just leaving. Well, Duke, it all comes down to this, just this. Now, if this is a clean proposition, you can count me in. But if any of this stock gets into the hands of these border sharpshooters, I won't play. No, sir, I won't play. I know, Bill. That's why we want you with us. Your name will keep the sharpshooters out. Thanks, you. thanks. Well, so long, good luck to you. Goodbye. Now then, son, now then. Will you have a cigar? Thanks. I'll stick to my kind. Okay. What's your name? Nick Ravel. 
Got some diamonds to sell. I was referred to you. Well, diamonds aren't exactly in my line, but sometimes I handle them to uh, help out a friend. Let me see them. Why do you want to sell them? Can't pay the customs duty to get them across the border. Well, didn't you know about the duty when you uh, acquired them? Yeah, I was supposed to meet a guy here and get them across for me. He didn't show. Son, why don't you get wise to yourself? I meet hundreds of men like you. They're not bad. Just misguided, just misguided. But they all come to the same end, in the pen or in a ditch. Because some of them listen to horse sense, like uh, Duke Warren, who just left here. They find out that easy money is the hardest kind of money to earn and to keep. So they start life all over again down here. It says outside this is a loan company. You want to buy the diamonds or don't you? Well, <laughs> it's immaterial to me whether I buy them or not. But I always like to feel that I might be staking some guy to a new beginning, a real beginning. How much do you want for them? Three thousand? Three, huh? Well, they're worth about two, but I'll split the difference. Twenty-five hundred. The deal. Okay. I'll give you two thousand now, and I'll stash five hundred for you. You may need it later on for fair to get back to States, huh? There you are. You probably carouse this all the way in a couple of weeks. That's what happens to most of them. If you do, you come back and see me, and we'll take it from there, huh? Thanks, Reverend. <laughs> Buy a chicken ranch. Wish I knew where there was a poker game with a little action. How much action? Enough to win 10 G's fast or drop a couple. I know where there's a game. Let's go. He's looking for a poker game. <laughs> Never mind the poker game. It's his game we're interested in. My game? You blow into town and talk like an operator. You con Angel and me about Tony Randall. You want to peddle rocks. I send you to a legitimate guy, Big Bill Dixon. You go to him. No operator would go to a legitimate banker. I figured you'd have some angle on this. It's your angle we're talking about. Told her she could check with the syndicate. We got quicker ways of checking. <laughs> you want to talk a little? I got nothing to say. Oh, you like it, huh? 
So do I. That's enough. Jumpy, take him in there. Maybe he's the man to fill Tony Randolph's shoes. Maybe you're crazy. Smooth, educated. Kind of a guy to send up north with the expedition. We need a guy, all right, but I can't see that bird. There's something about him that rubs me wrong. Maybe he's a fed or an operator from some other mob. I don't think so. No operator would take a beating like that without spilling something. This is all talk. You will not decide, or you or me, too. Who will decide this Mr. Upstairs? You're right, Angel. I'll give him a ring. Tell Jumpy to keep his eye on Ravel. What do you think I'm going to do? Let him walk out of here? He'll fit in our plans or in Tony Randolph's shoes no more. Inside. Relax, Nick. Sure, have a smoke. This is so sudden. How'd you like to join our outfit? What's the deal? Gold for the Orient. Somebody must have checked with the syndicate. Somebody did. But don't get curious about him. That was Tony Randolph's trouble. What do I do? For the present, you help Angel reduce the gold shipped in here to dust, black gold. How do you get it across? Ravel, you ask too many questions. I haven't declared myself in yet. And I don't until I know what I'm letting myself in for. But if I do come in, you're going to keep that big mouth shut or I'm going Are to break every small time. time. Ravel's okay. He's a right to know what he's letting himself in for. If he's going north to keep his eye on the professor, he should know every angle of the caper. I can't argue with that. Here's the situation, Nick. The guy who calls the shots for us has an interest in a bonded trucking company. One of the big trucks was hired by an archaeological expedition from Southern Pacific University. Where are they digging? In an old Aztec city farther south. The expedition has an immediate entry permit from U.S. Customs. That means the cases containing the old pottery and stuff they dig up goes across without examination at the border. I'm beginning to get the idea. We were looking for a way to get a fortune across, so the expedition was a godsend. Berger and Jumpy here make plaster of Paris bottoms for the old pottery, and then pour in the dust. Yeah. Do a pretty good job of it, too. It has to be good, because after it gets to the university, it's examined by Los Angeles customs agents. After it passes, a couple of our men up there get out the gold dust and take it to the ship. Well, why not go straight to the ship just as soon as the truck clears the border? Have the customs agents swarming down here if the stuff doesn't get to the university on schedule? Our Mr. Upstairs doesn't work that way. Can't argue with success. But who's in charge of this expedition? Seems to be very cooperative. There's a young professor, a Dr. Ross Carrington, in charge. When he stopped over on his way south, we introduced him to champagne and poker. When he lost the expedition's money, he realized he'd lose his job and be disgraced if the university found out. So you give him back the money if he plays ball? That's right. He's been sending the stuff up here for us to work on. Your main job will be to go north with him and keep him in line. Sounds like you're onto something pretty good. Guess you can count me in. Good. Just do what you're told and don't get any fancy ideas. Angelo will keep an eye on you here, and in Tia Cali, it'll be Jumpy and me. And remember, they uh, didn't find any bullet holes in Randolph's body. See you around, huh, Nick? You'll be all right, Nick. When you're in town, drop by. We'll split another bottle of champagne. Swell idea. You can sleep in the other room. Angel sleeps here. And they tell me he's a very light sleeper. If you ask me, I think you spilled too much to that guy. He's either one of us or he's not. And if he isn't, he's not going anyplace or seeing anybody.
Come in, Angel. Gracias. Ah, it's good. Nick, you are crazy for music like my little girl, Angelina. Hmm. She played the piano like a real amateur. She's artist. Hey. One of these days, she played before thousands of people. I tell you, she's great amateur. <laughs> no wonder you're proud of her. Sure, sure. Look at her. Hmm. Look what a nice little muchachita. Huh? You see, she sent me another letter from the comet. I told you she's with the sisters in Mexico City, no? Oh, she's... Last time I see her, she's uh, 12 years old. Now she's 13. You haven't seen her for a whole year? Two months. But you just said the last When time. I see her, it's before her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, look. All the time before she writes Spanish, now this time she writes in English. She say she want to improve her vocabulary. How do you say in English? Bo vocabulary. 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 Now, who, who's going to improve mine? Well, maybe I can help you with it, Angel. Yeah, that's a good idea. Please. Well, what does she mean here when she refers to you as a banker? Well, Nick, it's, it's a long story. You see, when my wife, she died, I want my muchacha to have the best of everything. So I gotta have money, lots of money, all the time. When she's little, I give her fine nursing. Then I send her to, to nice convent school. I give her everything she wants in her heart. The poor little kid, she thinks her father is he's a big man. What I can do? I know I can tell her that I am a lawyer or a doctor because like this I cannot talk. But if I tell her that I own a bank, then the money, she can talk. <laughs> yes, but uh, aren't you afraid she'll find out someday? Yes. And that's what worries me all the time. What I can do, I, I live day by day, I hope. I say to myself that if I am a bad man, I know God is good. You just keep thinking that way, Angel. <sighs> Nick, you're a good hombre. Yeah. Now listen, why don't you have me write a nice letter in English to Angelina and then we take the gold to the warehouse, huh? It's all right, Angel. Gold dust. Well, been giving you any help, or has he been trying to mastermind the job? Nick is all right. He's a nice fellow. I wouldn't know about that. As far as I'm concerned, the jury's still out. Nails, you make trouble. Solitaire, she says. I don't care what she says. And I don't like taking orders from a skirt. Not when I stand in just as solid with Mr. Upstairs as she does. And I don't like guys who hide behind a skirt either. They've got to prove themselves to me. Look, Berger, I told you if you didn't keep your big mouth shut, I'd shut it for you. thinking of myself as a big shot. To beat somebody with your fist doesn't make you anybody. On the other hand, a shiv gives you real authority. Put it away. Take one more step and I'll cut you. Drop that knife. What's the matter with you fools anyway? We're working on a job that means a fortune to all of us and you act like a bunch of school kids. Nobody's gonna ride me. I know the score, Nick. There's a couple of tin-horned big shots who don't like taking orders from dames. 
Well, if you've got any complaints, you know where to take them. Yeah, and if Mr. Upstairs know about this, a couple of guys are going to get downstairs. So we had a beef. So what? Okay, okay. So we're working on a big caper. Everybody's keyed up. Oh, I guess you're right, Jumpy. Get yourselves cleaned up, boys. Come over to the tiger. We'll throw a little shindig. Let our hair down. Really down? Way down. The heart, a meeting heart to heart, y nunca te olvidaré. That's just another way to say that this beautiful love will grow, yes, even though we're oceans apart. So place your hand within my hand and tell my heart you understand. All this language of love that I've learned just for you. Then kiss my lips and hold me close, dear, as I repeat in tender tone. De corazón a corazón, oh darling, I adore you. Con mi dolor hecho verdad. You don't talk, you don't drink, except with your eyes, maybe. It's less intoxicating that way. No, no. Every time you blink, I get all drunk inside. You give me one big hangover. Try hanging over burger for a while. Yes, I think maybe I better. Sure, baby. Slide down here and have a few laughs. Come on. <laughs> I seem to be spoken for. Do you mind? I don't know. Some women would kiss you tonight and have you killed tomorrow. You know what we say down here? Manana Cerro Tradia. Tomorrow will be another day. I'm glad my weakness is cards. Still want to lose that money you got from Big Bill? Practically burning a hole in my pocket. How about a hand of showdown for me? Here. This is hardly the place for a showdown. Yes. What did he say? He's blessed, my boot. <laughs> See you a little later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not aquí in Mexico. It's different. It's not what Huh? Well, I hear it. Here we are. What do you have to drink, Nick? You mix it, I'll drink it. That was the inspiration for the name of the cabaret. Reminds me of a woman I know. It does? Mm-hmm. Beautiful, powerful, tantalizing. And always ready to tear a man apart. Why should a girl want to tear a nice man apart? Tigers can purr, you know. I suppose so.
providing you've stroked them the right way. Too bad your weakness is cards. You know what my weakness is. You've known it from the first minute. What's wrong, Solitaire? What is it? Nothing, Nick. Looks like somebody else did a little tearing apart. Men don't bother me that much. Who are you kidding, Solitaire? You've been thinking about him all evening. What happened after you convinced him that manana sera ought through dia? We came up here to play cards. You've been talking a big game. Let's see how you play it. Sit down. I suppose the, the lady deals. We'll cut for deal. After you. Your deal. One hand of showdown. Winner take all. Looks like your king high wins it. Looks like your luck's run out. It'll change. Nick, I'd like to go back to the cabaret. Solitaire. Dr. Carrington, Nick Ravel. How are you? Nice to know you. When did you get in, Ross? A few hours ago. Well, then you'll be ready to go across the border in a few days. Nick's the man who was picked to go with you. I'm not going across. You're not? What do you mean? I'd like to have a talk with you, Solitaire. I was just leaving. Go back to the cabaret, Nick, and join the boys. I'll be along later. You seeing him? had a long trip. Aren't you going to invite me to have a drink? Of course, Ross. Ross, what's happened? You seem different. You mean different from the bookworm that everybody took advantage of? Well, maybe I am. For one thing, I've learned that what I feel for you is something I won't get over. I don't think you'll get over it either. Get over what? Aren't you taking a lot for granted? Why don't we stop acting, Solitaire? Oh, Ross, this is all wrong. No, it isn't. I thought it all out while I was alone down there in the Aztec village. We could slip across the border tomorrow, start out together and... and... ruin the rest of your life. What do you think they'd say at the university? Maybe if I was honest with them, told them what happened and explained the circumstances... They'd still be out the money you lost. Not necessarily. If they got in touch with the customs agents, they might be able to recover the stuff from the warehouse here. Oh, it could all be worked out. Ross, I've been doing a little thinking too while you're away. I can't just slip away from everything by crossing the border, but you can and I want you to. Not without you. Darling, I can't pull up stakes and walk out in a mob. Not with the kind of a man that's behind this one. He'd have me followed wherever I go, followed and brought back. He'd deal with me personally. He always does when anyone interferes with him. There's some way out of this, darling. There's got to be. Well, honey, we can't solve it tonight. You're right. Manana sera otra dia. Don't say that. Why not? It reminds me of things I'd like to forget. Let it remind you that there's really going to be an outro deal for us.
is a nice, 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 nice guy. <laughs> Here, jump here, jump here, here, jump in this and get your nose wet. You better be careful, Angelo. Solitaire had you working here. Hey, good. How are things? Warm enough. Carrington's back in town. When did he get in? I don't know, but he was up to see Solitaire. I thought Ravel was with her. He was. But he left when the doctor went in. Then Ravel gumped shoot outside her window. I'd like to know what that guy's up to. I don't like that Carrington solitaire deal either. Maybe he's still carrying a torch. I don't care about him. It's what she's doing that gives me the willies. All we need on a big caper like this is to have a dame get soft and careless. And end us up in a federal pen. Yeah. Listen, you latch on to Revell. Have one of the boys tail Carrington. Don't let him out of your sight, you got it? Carrington. Yes? Looks like you're sitting in on a tough game. I'd hardly call it a game. Maybe I can get you out of it. What's the matter, thieves falling out? I can't explain now. You've got to trust me, Carrington. Stay out of the Bronze Tiger. Stick close to Solitaire's apartment for the next few nights. I'll try to get in touch with you there. All right. What's the matter with you? You've been out there talking to yourself the last hour. Sure. Things are so bad that even if they get better, they're that terrible. That bad, huh? Yeah. I received another letter from Angelina. She say she come to see me. She started right away. She bet she'll be glad to see her, huh? Nick, what's the matter with you? Are you crazy? She expects to see beautiful big hacienda with swimming pool and the servants and the smell of rose garden and heliotrope. Heliotrope? Heliotrope or tripe. She smell this instead. Well, let her let her tell her not to come. There must be some excuse. I find excuse before. I say I'm busy. I say I'm sick. Now, well, what I say? Tell her you're going to take a trip. New York, London, Paris. Tell her anything. Nick, to take that trip, I have to spend a lot of money. And I need it for Angelina. Look, Angel, you're not taking the trip. You're just telling her that you are. Oh, I'm not, not taking it. So, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Good. Look, Nick, I, I'm no good for right uh, lies, you know. Why don't you compose a nice letter for me, like, like you did before, huh? You're my friend, huh? Sure, Angel. Sure. Please, please. I, I got the pen here, the ink and everything. And bring you present when I get back from Europe. Hoping you are the same, I remain your truly, your father, Angel Ovarillo, banker. All right, Nick? Fine. Nick, I don't know how to thank you. Well, gracias. I hope it gets there in time. You better post it tonight, airmail. Tonight? What to do that? I, I must drive to Tia Kali. Well, if you want to take a chance on her leaving. No, no, no. I, I cannot take the chance. You see, if you knew how to make gold dust, I could go, but you don't know how to oh, make I'd it. I'd be glad to post it for you, Angel. You? <laughs> Berger and Solitaire, they say I must not let you go alone. Well, okay, skip it. If you want her to come and find you here, why... No, 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 no. I cannot take that chance. Look, Nick. You are my friend. I trust you. As if you were myself, huh? Now, I'll give you the letter. You go there, you post them, and then come right back, no? Yes? Sure, Here. Ravel now. I hope so. Oh, we just about given you up. I had a tough time getting away from Angel. Hello, Solitaire. Are you sure you weren't followed? I don't think I was. I told Solitaire about our conversation the other night. Of course, it was all rather vague. Well, it had to be. I don't see how we can get very far if we don't lay all our cards on the table. Well, then, let's be frank. I overheard your conversation the night Carrington returned. 
I know that you two want to get away without repercussion from the U.S. government or the gold operators. Do you think we could? Yes, I do. I might be able to help with the government. But as for the gold ring, that's up to you, Solitaire. Up to me? What do you mean? I mean that they wouldn't be a problem to you or anyone else if you just tell me who Mr. Upstairs is. No, I, I couldn't do that. He'd have me killed. You can't blame her. Isn't there some other way you could go about it? Los Angeles. Go see James Goodwin of the Customs Office. Tell him who Mr. Upstairs is and all the rest of it. He'd contact the Federales down here and in no time Mr. Upstairs would be picked up. Meanwhile, you two would be guarded as long as necessary. But wouldn't I be arrested as an accomplice? You'd be held as a state witness. But the government isn't hard on people who are trying to go straight. Well, what do you think, Ross? I think it's our one chance. Let's take it. But what about you, Nick? Won't they suspect you once we disappear? I'll take my chance, too. I hope you don't think I had any part in killing anybody. I even tried to save Tony Randolph. Please believe that. She isn't hard to believe, is she? Well, adios. Good luck. You need it. You were seen spying on Solitaire. As one of us, that wasn't your job. So Mr. Upstairs made another check with the Syndicate. Only this time, he's careful not to contact any government plants. He got in touch with Cardone himself. And Cardone didn't know any Nick Ravel. That's right. But he thought the description might fit a certain Matt Reedy, the customs agent at large. So that's the score, ladies and gentlemen, as of the present inning. Well, you made your mistake, baby. You lowered your guard and started seeing the boyfriend too much, but... I guess that's what happens to a girl in love. Huh, Solitaire? You're going across the border in the morning, all right, Professor, but under slightly different conditions than you had planned. You and I will be on the front. Solitaire will be in back with Jumpy. And I'll be keeping a sharp eye on her. You won't need to go along, Reedy, because the stuff isn't going to the university. We're shipping it direct from San Pedro on the boss's boat. Pulver? Take Mr. Reedy back to Hacienda. See that he's made nice and comfortable till Mr. Upstairs decides what to do with him. We'll send some of the boys up. And tell Angelo, one more slip up and that kid of his will be leaving the convent suddenly without graduating. Right. Come on. Jumpy. Get things ready. And if they decide to pitch a little romance, Watch the professor's technique. He must have something. He turned the smartest con dame in Mexico into a chump. You heard the man. Relax. Ready to speak? You know what it means if they hold us. I give Jumpy the nod, we get hung for one more sheep. Morning. Good morning. I'm Dr. Carrington from Southern Pacific University. Uh, we have a truckload of archaeological specimens we'd like to take a truck. I have an immediate transportation entry permit. I see you, Doctor. You know, we're a little more careful with these. A lot of people have been abusing the privilege. Seems all right. Let's take a look. Well, now. You wouldn't be concealing any jewels in there, would you, Doctor? No, no, of course not. Well, go ahead through, but remember, call the customs office as soon as you get to Los Angeles. I understand.
Angel. Angel. What do you want, Anik? I gotta talk to you. It's important. We talk, we talk, and every time I open my mouth, I swallow my foot. What is important you gotta talk? It's about your daughter. That is just an excuse to make me soft inside. If you're a cop, you're a nice fellow. We were good friends here together. Sure, Angel. We got along swell. I'm afraid for you, my friend. Things don't look so good. Somebody come here, maybe one hour, maybe two, I don't know. I know. Our friend, Mr. Upstairs. Yeah. Well, at least my curiosity will be satisfied. I suppose the truck got across the border all right. Yeah. We'd sell it here in the dark. That's too bad for them, too. They're sailing on the Vancouver, aren't they? Uh-huh. Now you try to pump handle me, no? Well, what's the difference? You ain't going any place. Mr. Upstairs, he's interested in the freighter Simone. What do you know about Angelina, please? Did you hear the threat they made about her? Yeah. Do you think I should take her out from the commons so they don't know what she is? Well, that would help anyway. Yeah. Where, Nick? Where? She's a little child. She has no mother. Well, then she certainly should have her father. Why don't you go down there and make a home for her? What? My business is here. I've got to make money. Well, not this kind of money. Your girl doesn't want big hacienda servants, and swimming pools. She wants companionship. Someone she can trust and admire. You can't fool her forever. Suppose she finds out that you're a racketeer, a smuggler. Nick, what do you try to do to me? You soften me up so that I let you go? But don't you understand there are other people outside there? They're all around the hacienda. You can't go out. Yeah, I know. There's no chance of my getting away from here. But there is something you could do for me. Something that your daughter would be proud of if she knew. What do you want, Nick? What is it? Angel, I built a wire recorder in the back of my radio. When Mr. Upstairs leaves, I want you to take this spool out. Get it to James Goodwin at the customs office in Los Angeles. Me go to a cop? They arrest me. Not when they hear the message. But you will be arrested if you keep on working with these people. And your daughter will see you behind the bars of a federal prison. That's what I dream bad about all the time. You won't have any more bad dreams, Angel, if you do what I ask. And your daughter will be safe. Well, all right, Nick, you, you talk the message. Then let me think it over, please. Then, and then I see what I can do, huh? That's it, Jim. I'm having to gamble on Angel getting this to you. I think it's a good bet. Sounds like somebody arriving, probably Mr. Upstairs himself. I'll leave this running. Maybe it'll pick up something for you. So long, fella. Big Bill! Don't tell me you're Mr. Upstairs. I'm afraid so, Mr. Reedy. I'm afraid so. But I haven't got time to discuss that with you now. I'm leaving for the Orient in a couple of days, sailing on my last trip. But I want to wind up my affairs here before I leave. I don't want to leave any unfinished business. Simonia sails in an hour. We can make it. Come on. Have two men meet us downstairs. Yes, sir. How soon are we sailing, Captain? As soon as the cargo comes aboard. Why do you have to take a cargo in this trip? What do you want the crew to think? If they'd known it was hot gold, they'd never have signed on. 
Yeah, I guess you're right. Guess you're right. Well, uh, we'll be getting on our way in about a half an hour, Burger. How about our passengers in the cabin? Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to get rid of them right now, do we? Slip in to see that they're comfortable. Well, how are the lovebirds? Boss wants to know if you're comfortable. Why don't you let us go? You're getting away with everything you want. Oh, we like your company. Maybe we'll drop you off in the Philippines. Good place for a honeymoon. Jumpy! Don't get excited, Professor. You ain't the type. Come on, Jumpy. I don't think they like us. Harrington got a little rough, but Jumpy toned him down. Hey, look. That's a government car. Get down there, quick. Stop him with the gang plane. on you, including Matt Reedy's murder. Get your things and come along. Come in. Ross, darling. Hello, dear. I'm sorry I couldn't get to the trial, but I had to clear things up at the university. I understand, but everything's going to be all right now. Big Bill was sent up for life, but the Mexican authorities were wonderful to Angel and me. They gave us probation for turning state's evidence. I guess I have everything now. So have I. <sighs> you are going to miss the play. You, you are going to miss the play. So they take the next one. Or the next one. 